What's up, y'all? It's your boy Emmanuel. Um, today, y'all ain't gonna be seeing my face. This is more going to be like a podcast um, voiceover, kind of explaining how I lit um, this particular clip. Like, so it's going to be broken down into three parts. So the first part, I'm um, just going to touch a little bit on the pre-production process. Tell you guys a little bit about, you know, the gear that I use, what camera um, and lens combo, and a little bit of, about my in-camera settings. Then the second part of this, I'll dive a little bit about how I lit these shots um, and I'll break down each section for you guys, tell you guys what lights I use and all of that good stuff. And the final part of this, I'll touch a little bit on my post-production process. So that's pretty much it. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right, yeah, so the first step and probably one of the most important aspects of any shoot is your pre-production. So I knew for the story, this is a mom kind of like writing a poem about her two kids. So I wanted this to be um, very moody, warm-ish feeling like this is her home. Let's talk about the camera that I used. Um, I use the only cinema camera I have, which is my Z Cam 2S6. And then of course my trusted Irix, um, 15mm and 45mm lenses. I love those lenses. My in-camera setting, I'm actually going to um, flash that right now. Um, I try personally as much as possible to get it as correct or as close as possible in camera. So um, I'll go ahead and flash that one more time so you guys can kind of take a look at my in-camera setting. All right, y'all, so that's the first part done. So now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this, the reason why you guys are here, the lighting. So um, in order to really get a comprehensive breakdown of my lighting, I'll break down each section for you guys. So the first things we're going to start with um, is right here. And I wanted to emulate um, moonlight. The reason why I did that, because I wanted to add color contrast. Get this particular color. Obviously, I'll show you guys. So here's the light outside. Pretty much, I mixed a CTO gel and a CTB gel. All right, y'all, so now we're just going to touch on the um, little accents of lighting that I put in this frame to help me add depth and visual interest. Obviously, right here, this is practical lamps. So the next thing that I did was I noticed that right here, if I, um, behind her, I didn't really have any visual interest. That wall was just a bland gray wall. So right here, I had a Pavel 230X, um, just below. So that's what, um, so that tube, as you guys can see in the video, is what is giving me that light. And it was set to, um, 3200 Kelvin at, um, I believe it was 25 maybe 25 or 30 percent um light intensity you guys see that little streak of light it just helps to separate that and actually define that i use my cheap led i just set that um to the same intensity as this i, I believe also this was around 25 to 30. all right so then let's go to the next part um of this was so right here honestly for this this isn't there was no special lighting because there's just a bathroom right behind this wall right here all i did was just turn on the light pretty much this is just a bathroom light with the door open and right here as you guys are seeing in this video right here i had another pavo tube um 30x i believe this one was set at 45 percent also this was set at 3200 kelvin so this right here was what helped me add room tone and so the other light that I had is right here. I had another Pavo tube um, 30X as my hair light. As you guys can see, just this little kicker right here on her head, just this little edge, right? This was set at um, 3%. So that's all the lights that I added in the background. So now let's go ahead and talk about my key light. All right, y'all. So for my key light, I use a Forza 500. And you guys have seen the videos and pictures right now on how I um, actually had that set up. Um, so that is my key light is the Forza 500. So a couple important things um, in 
regards to the placement of the light and why you know the lighting was actually placed exactly where it was so i did not want it to be too fronty i knew i wanted it to be slightly at a 40 30 to 45 degree angle almost on the forza 500 it was set at 40 percent i put a cts straw um and i folded that in half and then for my actual diffusion cloth as you guys can see um on here um that is a bed sheet that my wife gave me and so what i did for that is i just doubled that up because i knew even at 40 percent that forza 500 has enough kick and i just wanted this to be as soft as possible so i doubled that up and even at 40 percent like it was still too bright one of the important things um as you guys have seen in the videos and pictures is being able to control and shape the spill just because the light is so bright i have black cloths everywhere i mean everywhere so I had my four by eight neg um, right here. And then on the cabinets, I also taped a four by four neg on there. That's pretty much it on my key lighting. Um, it's just, you know, just being able to have an overall vision and a plan was, help, was what helped me get this particular look. All right, y'all, now that we've touched in on the lighting a little bit, I'll just um, give you guys a brief rundown of my post um production workflow so the first thing that i do is i add a film emulation lut so this one is the rec 709 kodak 2383d55 and i got this technique from um wazi kazi i think that's his name if i'm mispronouncing that forgive me but he's a youtuber there's a pro colorist the next thing i do is add my general exposures because as you guys can see with this LUT, it just makes everything too dark so we brought up that exposure just a little bit so i can see what i was working with um and then this third note is like my where i start to color correct i add um, my white balance trying to get there around my temperature my tint and my saturation so this is where i try to just finesse that as much as possible and then i go to my log wheels so for me you guys can see the different very subtle and then on here on the log wheel i did finesse my hue saturation a little bit but i don't do too much here because i know the next node that's what i'm going to do so my next node which is my hsl so that's where I try, I start to get my colors just slightly to where I need it to be. And this next um, one is, as you guys can see, I added a power window because I really just wanted to um, affect everything else but my talent's face. So I wanted to bring down, because you guys can see this is slightly too bright. I just wanted to bring that down slightly more to just give it a more richer feeling. Right here, this is my skin node. So with this, what I did was I added a window and I did HSL. Um, I used a qualifier so I really just wanted to make this warm and saturated as much as possible. And then this next node right here, just add just a little bit of some pop right there. So you guys can see the difference. And then some sharpening right there, just to bring it in all together. And that is pretty much it on my whole color grading. Um, post-production process like I said I'm not the best but this is just simple things that I do for my images but that's pretty much it y'all if you guys like this please 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 subscribe hit the bell um, icon and just comment um, I'm going to try to put these out more consistently for you guys and do a lot of uh, do a lot more breakdowns for you guys um, I'm trying to hit 1k subscribers by the end of this year it is totally doable so i definitely will need you guys once again just like subscribe and that's pretty much it y'all peace